Joe Thomas in the morning and Joe Thomas in the morning television on the news flights now channel more unconventional convention coverage. And I discovered something very quickly about this couch we have. Uh, and this is actually a segment we did at, at the uh, closing moments of Freedom Fest, uh, though today is the opening of the Republican National Convention in Cleveland, and we're there as well, and we'll have some live stuff for you coming up. But I realized this couch makes me feel like I'm Jiminy Flick all of a sudden. So tell me, what does a congressman do? Uh, he is Dave Brett, uh, Seventh District Congressman. Dave, good to see you. Now you're on the speaking day, as you've already had yeah. several forums start with you. Uh, how's things been going at Freedom Fest? Oh, it's great. It's great to see you in every city I go to. In a way, I'm, try I'm, I'm stalking you. You're going to have to get an order. It's fine. Every, every liberty thing you're at, keep it up. Well, now, you have a book out, and I know that you know, this has been a you know, real hot topic because this book has been sort of a primer for folks who want to break the system down. And, and we hear a lot of that here. You know, they, they call this uh, the lar world's largest gathering of free minds. Right. And one of the things that people feel sometimes is that the system, as Donald Trump has said, yeah. is rigged. Uh, Bernie Sanders it said is. it as well. Right, it is. And my book just sets up the three pillars that made us a great country, and all three of them have been hugely important in the idea of human liberty. One is the Judeo-Christian tradition. And the irony, a lot of people think religious is kind of top-down or whatever, but the, the, the Judeo-Christian tradition is the opposite. We believe in freedom of conscience. Mm -hmm. If God wanted robots, uh, God could have had robots. Mm -hmm. He gave us free will, and then James Madison, and that, the history which led up to him, was the history of moving toward establishing that freedom in, in structure. And then we get free markets and the rule of law, and etc. And that, all of that together has given us this great country, which is now being threatened and, and under assault by the hard left on all three of those foundations. We, we talk about Judeo-Christian, uh, and you're an ethics professor as well as an economics professor and a congressman. Uh, and you know, we talk about the seven deadly sins. Those started as a sociological ex uh, exercise. Yeah. People started saying, well, what are the great weaknesses the human spirit right. has? And one of them is sloth, and then one of them is greed. And, and you start to see these things swirl together. And uh, my friend Sean Kenny writes columns under the heading, uh, this is why we can't have nice stuff. Sometimes, you know, we have free markets, and it seems like the intellectual uh, obvious thing that most people want. But as soon as we get it, we start meddling with it because there, there seems to be a vocal enough minority that says, no, I don't want that. I, I want the same as what you have. I just don't want to have to work. Well, and that is interesting because the rule of law gets, uh, a lot of people say, well, you believe in free markets, so therefore you're a libertine. You don't believe in the law. No. <laughs> <laughs> the rule of law and the nation state and the body of law, we believe, pre-exist and markets come on top of that. And so it, it is interesting how that gets twisted, uh, left yep. and right, there's this big debate, but just look at the history of how it emerged, mm -hmm. and that's what we want. And so now the sloth piece is more interesting too, right? Where is the law? Where's the discipline in K-12 school? With, oh the, with the cops and police and sheriff and fire and first responders who are being disrespected, mm -hmm. where is the order that society demands? And so if you lose that, right, we're seeing uh, the end result. Well, and you see what happened in Nice uh, and the horrors that happened there. And this is what I, I, I fear that we've gotten so structured in our life that we've actually set ourselves up for the kind of devastation and the, the shock that we see when somebody disrupts a celebration like their Bastille Day celebration. Yeah, well, yesterday Paris was just a, a total tragedy. I, I think I just heard a news flash from Turkey right now in a possible coup with Erdogan. And so uh, we'll see. I heard something coming over the wire on CNN. And uh, the foundations are quaking for real, right? We're at war. Mm -hmm. the, what's the Obama's messaging on war? Nothing. What's the Republican Party messaging on war? Nothing. We, we have Islam, ISIS, coming through the southern border, documented the FBI. It's got a 1,000 open terror cases across 50 states. What's the president's messaging on homeland security? What's the Republican messaging on homeland security? Nothing. And so we better wake up and smell the coffee. You talk about ethics, you talk about why the United States was great in its foundation. Our foundation took all the different faiths of the world into consideration. Right, right. What we're facing, though, are people who, A, break the cardinal tenet, thou shalt not murder. You can be whatever you want. Don't violate somebody else's rights, 
But you know, you're free to have your religion, just don't think you're going to enforce it on us. And we see the theocracies, and if this coup in Turkey is going on, I'm sure it's on a theocratic uh, scale because Erdogan was a, a, a moderate and a, and a relatively Western thing. Yeah, well, you're going to get me in trouble for this next statement, but if you ask me who got it right between the Judeo-Christian theologians on human nature and then the founders, some of the founders were a little utopian. <laughs> and so they may have made a mistake with respect to Islam, and it's particularly the radical strands, right? They are using our very virtues. Madison and Jefferson were, were most proud and wanted on their headstones, right? Not author of the Constitution. They wanted author of the statutes on religious toleration. That was that was the thing they were most proud of. And they assumed that human re reason along with the Judeo-Christian tradition would get you there. And it did for us. And we had terrible tragedy with slavery and all sorts of right, rights problems we had to work out. But we made huge progress. But the one thing they may have missed was the threat of the, the jihadist strand of Islam that does not respect freedom of conscience. They are more than willing to dictate. Is it a problem with our judicial system? Because I feel like it, it's fairly commonsensical, Dave. Yeah. Dave Ratt with us, Congressman 7th District, that if somebody violates the law and you're trying to hide behind religiosity, it, 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 it's a false flag argument because you still don't have the right to break the law. Whatever you claim is your right. Uh, to do so based on any sort of religious text. Yeah, well, the courts, I mean, I think our side of the aisle thinks the courts have been off for 50 years, etc. I mean, it's we, we had a constitution with 18 enumerated powers. Mm -hmm. The courts have not only obliterated all of those lines, they basically come out now and straight out tell you, and Comey's logic is kind of like this, and Robert's logic was just like this on Obamacare, that if we see that for the greater good we have to go in a certain direction, uh, we elites will move the country in that direction. And I, I cover that in the book, American Underdog. Uh, one last uh, bit at Freedom Fest on the Jiminy Glick couch here in the main rotunda. It's Joe Thomas in the morning, our unconventional convention coverage, RNC convention getting underway this morning. We are here uh, in Cleveland, uh, and uh, we'll have more stuff coming up from Cleveland, but finishing up here in Las Vegas, Dave Brad on several different panels. Uh, as uh, Talk about the... We just had the Libertarian chair on. Gary Johnson's supposed to stop by for a little while as well. Certainly, Gary Johnson's got the same kind of battle you faced in winning the primary in the seventh district. Uh, that sort of "oh, you'll never win" kind of attitude. Have you talked to him, or has he bought your book <laughs> about how to how to bring that kind of uh, long shot in, uh, home? I, I haven't talked to. I hope he's wandering the halls. I'm going to look forward to meeting him right here. Yeah, well, but come talk about this it convergence because there are lots of conservatives, lots of libertarians, and yeah. there seems to be a bridge in between. There's a lot of commonality. It's the old Reagan. Uh, we agree on 80 percent of our stuff. Why are we fighting? Right. Well, and I think that is important to understand. There's a lot of folks here on the libertarian strand that are very disappointed in Trump, to put it mildly, but. If you look at the three strands of the book I just mentioned, right, mm -hmm. the Judeo-Christian tradition, the rule of law, and free markets, Trump is affirmative on all three. Yep. And the left and Hillary and Elizabeth Warren, it's an all-out assault on all three, right? In higher ed, etc., it's an assault on the Judeo-Christian tradition. The cops on the left are smeared, and the free market system, they don't know what it is. They want, <laughs> they want to total central government planning of everything. Well, because we've just messed right. things up. We would just right. go buy dumb stuff. And, and you, you, that's the thing that I think is, is amazing, is the folks who would most benefit from freedom are the ones that line up to vote for the people who are the antithesis of it. Well, in the, uh, up in Congress, the issue right now is this, the terrorism seeping across the border and asylum and etc. I worked at the World Bank 25 years ago, and that is the irony, right? If the left would have pursued free markets 25 years ago, you would be done with world poverty. South America would be doing fine and dandy. The Africa. Chinese and the Indians are doing fine now. They're growing like crazy. And uh, so, right, the left is, is prohibiting the only thing that is capable of bringing the poor up to be rich, and it's money. I mean, yep. there's a shocker, right? You need money to be rich, so let's make it. Well, last the time, poor. a couple of years ago, there was a film that's now on Netflix. It's called Poverty, Inc., and it's right. all about the misery industry where, yeah. you know, these the profiteers make big salaries kind of just 
promulgating more and more misery so that they can keep sending aid to it. Right. And the Africans are saying, please stop, you're helping us to death. Well, and, and look at the social unrest in this country. Does anyone seriously think it's going to be solved in central government? No. No one does, right? We have, we have racial tensions now sweeping the country because, to a large extent, everyone's going to D.C. to get their hands on $4 trillion. Instead of staying at home and making the localities work, mm -hmm. like my friend over here, Lynn Taylor, I just saw walking by in the hall, and so I want to give a call out to her and all the great work she and her husband John have done over the decades for freedom. Well, and uh, you're talking to one of their employees, so uh, Freedom Good. and Prosperity Radio Excellent. is one of our uh, one of our core uh, functions here, and we always come out. And I don't know if you get a chance to speak in the John Taylor room. They're paying special yeah. tribute to oh, John yeah. this year. Uh, but uh, at the end, let's remind folks where they can find your book, uh, and will you be doing any book signings around yeah. the district, uh, keeping you busy up there? Yeah, oh, yeah. Just go to DaveBrat.com, my web page, and the book is American Underdog: Proof That Principles Matter Out Anywhere. Amazon, Barnes and Noble, all the big stores got it. In and uh, it lays out the case I've been trying to make for the last few years and 20 years of economics lecture notes embedded in that book. We're in Cleveland for the RNC convention. And I'm just wondering if, you know, we're, again, everyone's saying, oh, be careful, be careful. Are we letting the media to, uh, control our view of things? That you, it's happened to you quite a bit as well. Yeah. People tell us what Donald Trump thinks. Instead of, if you play out what he said, it's not what they're claiming at all. No, it's funny. You sat reading a book called Troublesome Young Men about Churchill and the young parliament that saved Britain from, from Hitler mm -hmm. back when Chamberlain wouldn't do anything. And the press was pro-Hitler. Oh, no yeah, one knows. I mean, no one knows this. It's the press is so awful, and right now it's the same. The press it, it just pursues whoever is paying the checks <laughs> and doing the advertising. Yet. Get your truth from a truthful source. Well, we just watched Climate Hustle, and boy, I felt really bad watching it because as a member of the media, it really slams the media for its complicity right. in pitching this kind of fraud. Dave, again, uh, DaveBrat.com. Yep, DaveBrat.com and American Underdog. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You bet.